us talk maintenance. Um, let's talk about how to take care of your machine. What's up guys, I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. I asked and you guys answered. <laughs> I asked uh, I asked you guys if you had any newbie questions and I got a lot, a lot of questions on how to maintain your dial lasers, how to clean your optics and just kind of maintain the whole form factor of the machine. This video is the second in a series of videos for the newbie laser owner. Now that you bought it, let's learn how to take care of it. I'm only gonna show you maintenance on the diode. Reason being is that when you get into CO2s, the basics are the same as the diode, aside from mirror alignment, which you wanna keep your mirrors clean. Quick PSA, with all lasers, regardless of the type, you wanna keep your optics clean. Your optics are your lenses and your mirrors. However, I do think with the CO2, it's gonna depend a little bit more on your machine. If you guys want a CO2 laser maintenance video, leave a comment down below and we'll do a CO2 maintenance only video. But right now we're gonna stick with the diode. Like I said, you could usually extrapolate into CO2, but if there's enough questions or enough interest, I will definitely do a separate video for CO2. Okay, your laser lens. So that is inside. So here is your diode unit. Can't get this off. So here's what your diode unit's gonna look like. If you take this shield off, you've got a little stubby guy in there, that guy. See how mine's kind of dirty? It's only dirty on the outside. That's what she said. <laughs> but if you take that off, what you're looking at is this. This is the lens. Let me try to, that is the lens of your laser. It's where the, it's where the magic happens. Maintenance tip, go out or go to Amazon and buy just like a little toolbox, or this is a tackle box, because I think it was like five bucks. It doesn't have to be expensive. This is my diode laser one. And this is a place where you can put, you know, you got an area to put your tools, stuff that you can clean with, you got all that stuff. I didn't mean to rip the whole thing off. And then you've got an interior where you can keep all your bits and bobbles. And believe me, you're gonna get bits and bobbles. You'll get, you know, some place to keep your legs. If you have multiple lasers, you're gonna have little extra screws and crap laying all over the place. Just pick up something like this and then put all your shit in there. And whenever you need anything, just grab it. Um, and just get, get used to putting all of your laser stuff back in here. You will thank me. The most important thing is to keep your optics clean. So with the, so with your actual or your diode, you're gonna make sure you wanna keep this lens clean at all times. So what I have here is just a tiny little thing of 99% isopropyl alcohol. You could probably use 70%. I like 99%, it evaporates a little quicker. And then I have just these little guys that are meant less like a q-tip and more like to clean stuff and all you're gonna do is take a couple drops on here boop, boop. and then you're going to go right to the glass and you're gonna clean it all right now some of these will not allow you to take this piece off most of them do now if it allows you to take it off, unscrew it. You're gonna clean the other side of the lens. Shift it over here. If you have any other glass inside this, you wanna get that too. So you're gonna clean that. And then you're gonna screw your lens back on. And that's all you gotta do for your laser. Um, in sex, unless, like if you have X-Tool and you have one of these little guys, which is the guide, the guide uh, crosshairs, you may wanna like clean this off every once in a while. Sometimes that can get dirty. And then you wanna just inspect your module. And by inspect your module, I mean, just kind of check it out. If anything looks dirty, you may wanna give it a little swipe with this. Definitely clean your lenses first because anything else is gonna just get this dirty like that just did. Can you see that? But you know you may need to kind of poke around, and then the other big thing is you want to make sure you check out your fan. 
This fan is totally clean, but um, if not, you wanna shoot a little air through there. You wanna shoot a little air through there and just make sure these things get dusty. If they get dusty, they get clogged. If they get clogged, they stop spinning and the whole unit will burn up. I bought this, it's like 40 bucks. I started using this because I was tired of using compressed air and buying two of those things for 20 bucks and going through them. This thing's rechargeable and uh, as long as you keep it charged, you got plenty of air all the time. I'll link it down below if you wanna check it out. It's, there's nothing special about this one. Nick, how often should I clean my laser lens? That depends. Ugh. Actually, it depends on a lot. It depends on how much you use it, what you're cutting, things like that. What I would do is I would start out cleaning it every week. If you notice that it's always clean when you clean it every week, maybe extend it out to every two weeks. But especially if you're cutting a lot of MDF or stuff puts off any sort of uh, smoke, a lot of times that can, that can dirty up your lens pretty quick. But Nick, I already messed up my lens and I need a replacement. Where do I get it? You go to alivepixelcreates.com and they will send you one of these. I will link that down below. X-Tool is always out of lenses. So if you need a lens for your diode, you wanna go to Alive Pixel Creates and order one there. Daniel usually has them in stock. Daniel also does a lot of modifications for diode laser. I definitely suggest going and checking out his website. He has the lenses, the access mods, and a bunch of other just different kind of cool stuff that you can hook up to your machine. So go check him out if you're looking for something fancy. It is time for Ping Schwing. So a lot of you guys, especially if you ordered an X-Tool, got this in the package. What this is, this is lube, baby. Lube. External use only. It's my favorite subject, lube. So you get the the pangy swangy with uh, with the X tool. I don't really use this stuff. I just I, I just have they send it to you all the time. I have a bunch of them. If you want one, let me know. I'll send it to you. Um, just kidding. I'm not gonna send it to you. What I use is uh, some three in one oil, just this stuff. And let me show you how I apply the lube. We apply it like we apply any kind of lube, very carefully. Lube, this is not your average paper towel. This is a special secret super, it's just a fucking paper towel. Okay, we're gonna go a little bit. You don't need a ton. All right, so this is a rail. Pretty much on these machines, anything silver, but anything that has wheels that roll on it is a rail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna wipe it down. I'm gonna flip this over, I'm gonna wipe it down here. I'm gonna take the dry side, and I'm just gonna wipe it off. You don't need that much lube, just a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm shaking the camera. You also have this rail in here, this rail over here, do the exact same thing. Just a little lube, and see how that's dirty, and then you just come in, and don't push hard, you don't wanna wipe all the lube off, you just wanna get any excess. And then, I like to give it a little, a little push back and forth, make sure everything's going. And that, kids, is all I lube. This is also a great time to just make sure that your belts are tight, because you're right here. You already got everything kind of torn apart. Um, check your belts, make sure that, um, you know, I mean, it, like if you notice anything weird, you may not check it now, but uh, it doesn't hurt to wipe down the whole machine, just uh, any dirt, dust, things like that. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I do. Um, I mean, that's mainly it for maintenance. I, again, it depends on your, uh, like the conditions of your shop and whatnot. I really only lube my rails about once a month on the CO2, like even a little bit longer because it's closed. But again, it's just gonna depend on how much you're using it, uh, what, you know, what's your sawdust factor in your shop and things like that. All right, guys, one thing I forgot to mention down in the shop is how to clean your honeycomb. I did get a, quite a few questions on that. I probably don't clean my honeycomb nearly as much as I should. You really don't wanna wait as long as I do. I usually wait until it's kind of a sticky mess. When it gets a little dirty or you notice that some of the honeycomb is getting filled is when you want to maintain that. That's really gonna depend on if you're laser engraving versus cutting, things like that, uh, materials and all that good stuff. But I would just say once it gets kind of gross, and probably before it gets real gross, you wanna make sure that you clean it. The easiest way that I found to clean it is to use some sort of degreaser. I use Zep Industrial, I think it's purple degreaser, but I have seen people even use uh, the barbecue grill cleaner 
to do it. And basically you're just gonna take it out of the machine, take it out in the driveway or the backyard or something, spray that stuff down on it, and then hose it off and you should be good. You hoser. Eh? Can you tell I've been thinking about moving to Canada? How's it going? How's it going, eh? If you have any questions about initial diode laser setup, check out this video right here. And make sure to check out the comments. If there is something I missed, you guys are sure to let me know. And if you have a maintenance tip or trick, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. Make sure to check out my Patreon and Discord. I'm gonna let you know a little secret. I'm building a laser nation. Where the goal is to take a newbie hobbyist like yourself and turn them into a full blown laser engraving cutting business owner. So let's take you from garage shop to shop shop. Chop, chop, sucker!